with David Cohn. I'm Nancy Newman. It's that time. We're heading to the stretch run of spring training, so we're going to do a spring training report card. Sound good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's start with the pitching. Garrett Cole, as advertised, he was a little sick earlier in the week, but he's looking good now. He, I mean, he came out his first game throwing 99 miles yes. an hour, so this guy is uh, certainly a number one starter, the guy you want leading your staff, and also a leader, too. He's already taken charge of uh, the clubhouse and kind of teaching, talking to people, getting to know people. I mean, he's just been perfect, uh, a perfect fit for the Yankees. And he brings it on the field every single day. You can see the intensity, and you can also see that he's a willing teacher. He really is. I mean, you, his first press conference was yeah. done so well. I mean, his introduction to the New York Yankee fan base couldn't have gone better. And then one step at a time, you know, every step of the way, he's been right on point. And, uh, you know, I think the Yankee fans are just going to love this guy. And I know you've had a chance to spend some good time with him. Good conversation. What's your biggest takeaway from that? Uh, you know, the thing I love is his, his curiosity. He's never satisfied. He wants to learn his craft, and that's that's right in my wheelhouse, Nancy, as you know. I mean, you never stop learning in this game, and he, he respects the, the players that came before him, but yet he's also kind of new school, so he's got that good balance of uh, old and new, and uh, he, he's just always looking for an edge, looking for a piece of information that he can use. And I know you've always got an eye on the next wave, the young guys coming up. How great for them to have him showing the way. Absolutely. That's the, that's the guy you want leading yes. and setting the example for a lot of the young guys. And for me, you know, when you look at the next wave of arms coming up through the Yankee system, it's exciting. And there's some great, great talent on the way, knocking on the door. Probably we'll see them this year at some point. Who's impressed you the most? You know, there's so many. I mean, Clark Schmidt, mm -hmm. you know, former number one draft, uh, went through Tommy John surgery, is back, he's healthy. Um, you know, he's knocking on the door. Davey Garcia is right there. Michael King. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, the arms that are on on the way in the Yankee system, I mean, it, it, it's really exciting. If you're a Yankee fan, there's a lot of great arms on their way. And that number five starter, it is open. So there are decisions ahead there. There really are. I mean, um, th there's roster considerations, whether you're on the 40 man or not. Uh, certainly some of the young guys are falling into that right now. But when their time comes, they're going to be ready. And, and the Yankees are going to have choices. Uh, Jonathan Loisig has been great this mm -hmm. spring. He may be the, the shoe-in for the number five guy right now. But you're going to need more, more than five starters, as we've seen in years past. So uh, it's more like the next five. <laughs> right. You know, it's like 10 starters you yeah. need at, at, at times throughout the season. So I... I think the Yankees have incredible depth right now. Yeah, we're seeing that already. And before we move on, Jordan Montgomery has looked terrific this spring. Yeah, it's a great story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, we saw him, you know, in his really his rookie year. He was probably the best rookie pitcher, you know, three years ago when he was uh, in 2017 when he was uh, breaking in with the Yankees. And we, we thought, wow, this guy's going to be around a long time. Had the Tommy John surgery, and he's come back even better. He's throwing harder. Uh, he looks like he's hungry, and uh, how could he not be? I mean, when he's been out that long and gone through the, the adversity he's been through, uh, he's ready to really come back and, and reclaim his spot in the rotation. I like his confidence, quiet confidence, right? Yes, he's very confident. He knows because he had success here, so he knows he belongs. It's not like he's trying to establish himself. He's, he's just coming back from injury, so yeah, it's just a matter of him getting back out there again and, and doing what he knows he can do. More grades to hand out. Let's move around the infield. Glaber, everyday shortstop. DJ, everyday second baseman. Early thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, when you think about the offseason decisions and letting D.D. Gregorius go yes. and signing, you know, down the pike a little bit in Philadelphia, I think that was so D.J. LeMahieu can play second base every day. You know, I mean, the, the original plan was for him to move around and be a utility type of player, but he's too good. You need him mm -hmm. every day at second base. He's a gold glove fielder. And Glaber showed us last year in the first half when D.D. Gregorius was out that he can play shortstop. He's a natural shortstop. He came up to the minor leagues playing shortstop. So, you know, it's uh, I think that's that's the comfort level the Yankees have. It's okay. We can let we can let him play shortstop, play D.J. every day at second base, and we'll go from there. And they'd sign up every day for what D.J. did last year. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, he was just remarkable. And, you know, I, I think, you know, for a lot of players that come out of Colorado, you don't know what you're going to get. And there's kind of a stigma attached to those those guys that come out of Colorado. Is it the air? Are they, you know, what, what kind of player are they really? Well, we found out, you know, DJ LeMay is one of the best players in the game, you know, on all, both sides of the ball. So um, 
he's the guy you want, you know, playing every day and penciling him in. You don't want him moving around, even though he can do it, third base one day, first base the next day, now put him at second base every day and let's go. And Luke Voigt and Gio, your corners. Yes, um, uh, Gio deserves it. He, he really established himself last year. He's great with the glove, as we know. He really came into his own offensively, so he deserves a chance to be the everyday third baseman. And of course, Luke Voigt as well. I mean, his injury issues last year, but his profile as a batter is, is incredible. I mean, his plate discipline, the way he gets on base, uh, his power. Um, you know, he, another guy. When you look at the corners, you think these guys deserve a shot. You know, they they've earned they've earned their way to be the everyday guys. Let's address the outfield. A lot of activity, not all the great kind, with the injuries happening to yeah. Judge, etc. It does open some doors, and maybe walking through could be Miguel Andujar. Yes, Miguel Andujar is uh, certainly somebody everybody's excited to see mm -hmm. back and now all of a sudden he's got an outfielder's glove and he's going to play left field and uh, that, that just increases his, his, his ability to be versatile, to jump around and play multiple positions. To me, the, the story is Clint Frazier. It's time to mm -hmm. find out about Clint Frazier. I mean, he's been a top prospect for so many years. We saw him last year, and offensively really contributed last year. And people forget in the first half of the year when the injuries were, were hampering the Yankees that he really made a big impact on the Yankees. So it's time to find out about Clint. And, uh, and rightly so, he deserves the shot to find out, you know, exactly how good he can be. And Mike Talkman very much in the mix as well. Yes, he, he, another guy that, um, Paid his dues last year, really showed what what he can do, and uh, you know a guy that's going to be really counted on this year. And aside from the injuries, these guys would have been there either way. So uh, you know it's uh, it's nice to see people like that who came up through the minor leagues. They paid their dues, they had some success on the big league level, and now it's time for them to establish themselves and really cement their status as big league players. Let's make a full circle and go back to pitching and the bullpen finishing up yeah. there appropriately. Your thoughts, early impressions? Well, that is the strength of the team. The backbone of the team is the bullpen. And uh, when you look, they have two closers at the back end of the bullpen. And most teams would love to have one of those guys when you think about Chapman and Britton at the end of the games. Uh, Britton is one of the premier closers of his generation, and he's the eighth inning guy. So that shows you right there the depth they have on the back end. And then you fill it on in from there, from Adovino to Chad Green to Tommy Canely. The list goes on and on how deep they are. Uh, it's just incredible to me. I mean, when you think about six, seven deep of guys that could do any roles, you know, if you needed Adovino to close one day, he could close out a game. I mean, there's four or five different pitchers that have power arms that you'd be comfortable in any role, any, any inning uh, to put them in the game. And that's a luxury most teams don't have. Yeah, and Adovino, a guy we know has worked very hard at being quicker to the plate, holding runners back. Yes, I mean, he, he, this is, uh, he's, he's a smart guy, so mm -hmm. he's going to work on his weaknesses. Uh, that's a big deal, just giving your catcher a chance to, to, you know, it's not about throwing runners out, it's about slowing the running game down. So I, I think that will really help him this year, uh, especially when he comes into games with his runners on base late in the game. So that, that could be a big deal for him, just to, to, to put, put a stop gap on, you know, the, the running consistently on mm -hmm. him. So, yeah, I, I think... It doesn't surprise me with him because he's the type of guy that's really smart. He's going to work on his weaknesses, and he continues to do so. And I have to get a word from you on Gary Sanchez. Yes, I think, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Gary this year. People have high expectations for him. He set the bar so high when he first broke in a few years ago. When you think about 2017, you know, everybody thought, oh, my, this guy's a world beater. And he's kind of a victim of how high he set the bar back in 2017. But he's still, to me, one of the most talented catchers in the game. With the injuries to Judge and Giancarlo early in the season, he's going to be in the middle of that lineup. So there's even more pressure on him to really, you know, reestablish himself. And I think when you think about the other catchers around the game, he's right at the top of the list. You know, there's, uh, among among the top three or four best catchers in the game. And finally, early season prognostication. What are you seeing for this team? Oh, I see high expectations. I see incredible depth up and down the roster. They have a good farm system that can support if somebody gets hurt or to be able to supplement throughout the year. I, I think the Yankees, uh, they've been knocking on the door for the last three years. I, I think it's, it's sort of a World Series or bust type of year for them, and, and rightly so. And Aaron Boone's an excellent leader. He really has. He's established himself. Uh, he's 
more, very comfortable in his own skin. You could see him really coming to his own over the last couple of years. So uh, he's the manager of the Yankees. He knows it. The fan base loves him now. He is well established to take this team to the next level. Excited for the season. Yes, let's get going. David Cohn, ready to go.